What's up guys, Tuki here, back again. This is my Fantasy Draft Franchise Mode Series, of course with the St. Louis Blues here on NHL 17. And in this episode, despite the fact that we are the top team in our division, the top team in the Western Conference, we're going to make a change. We are going to take a risk. The people have spoken, and Patrick Laine... Admittingly, it's my fault. As I've said in other videos lately, I made the mistake of you know, using low potential to describe too many people, and low potential can just be a death sentence. Patrick Laine should be better than he is. It was the same thing with Charlie McAvoy in Boston, and of course we signed him to a super long contract, which is just not a good idea, and whether or not it's confirmed or not, I don't know, but it can really stunt the progression of of players. I wouldn't recommend signing somebody to uh, really anything more than five years. Like if, if you have someone who's under the age of 26 and they're asking for two or three years, just sign them to that. But anyway, the trade I have in mind, people will debate realism, which in which case I say it's a fantasy draft series. The Columbus Blue Jackets have somebody I want. Now, whether or not you think that they would trade him to me is up for debate, given their record. They are also a very good team at the top of the standings. But they have a rental. Remember, the main reason for trading Patrick Line, aside from the low potential and the extended contract, is he is expensive. And we have a lot of big UFAs and RFAs coming up. So my thought process was to go out and get a rental. Someone who I don't believe has won a Stanley Cup yet, hint, hint, who has one year left on his deal and is still an ap just an absolute beast. That would be Alex Ovechkin. Now again, would Columbus, in first place, be willing to trade Ovechkin? Well, when you consider the fact that they'd be getting a shiny new Patrick Line, maybe not. Now, the... This trade in and of itself wouldn't exactly be, I feel like, the most criticized trade. Obviously, we'd have to add to it. I know a lot of people would probably prefer me to add draft picks. But the Blue Jackets have some prospects that I wouldn't mind going after. The first one, although he's not really a prospect at this point, is Giovanni Smith. I would love if we could bury him in the minors for at least this year, and then we have him next year just because we have a log jam. But he has one year left, and he's going to be looking for money. So that isn't going to happen. But there is someone who they are willing to trade, and that would be the eighth overall pick from 2020, sniper Dave McCabe. So I'm definitely going after him. Like I said, too, they want to trade him. They don't exactly want to trade Ovechkin. There's this other guy here, too, Brett Davis, who I feel like could be an interesting pickup, 81 overall, two years left on his entry-level deal. And then there's one more, defenseman Radoslav Furtak, who, again, is it a bit of a stretch to go for Ovechkin and three of their prospects? Yeah, it probably is, but we're talking pretty fair close value for someone of Patrick Laine's stature. So I am going to have to chip in a couple of these other guys down here too that we of course signed for the one year and again realism it's it's a tough debate I don't even know if this will go through I'm gonna try this straight up I won't even tack on any draft picks will this go through it will not and in a way I'm kind of glad it is because of course we have a million goddamn picks this year so we could uh tack something on here actually we don't have as many as I thought we did now, if we tack on Pittsburgh's second, will this go through? Line A, a couple of throw-ins, and a second-round pick. Torrent Ovechkin, and we get a couple of decent prospects. That will not go through. I will try a first-round pick as well. If that doesn't go through, then we'll take somebody off the list. We will easily give them our first-round pick. That might as well be a second. Will that go through? Line A, a first, and a couple of players for Alex Ovechkin as a rental, and a few prospects. It went through. I probably could have tacked on a third or a fourth. I, does it really matter? Is it kind of cheap? Is it abusing the system? Is it a realistic trade? Yes, yes, and no. But I don't care. Alex Ovechkin, this season, 
is Operation Get Ovia Cop, god damn it. And then again, I can't say for sure, of course, because it was the Fantasy Draft Series, if he absolutely won a Stanley Cup in the series or not. I am not sure. But if he hasn't, then god damn it, this is going to be Obi's year. Now we should be able to send these guys down free and clear. And we are good to go. Patrick Line off to Columbus and for the rest of the year, say hello to Alex Ovechkin. Now we have to decide the top line. Obviously Clayton Keller's done okay. Jack Eichel is currently our leading scorer, so do I want to keep that top line together and just put Ovechkin in Patrick Line's spot is the question. Well, actually, too, it was Dow Cole on the top line, was it not? I believe it was. And then we had Keller Strom and... Uh, ba -ba -da. Wait, I forget the lineup exactly. I forget the lineup. I believe it was Strom, Keller, Line. So we could just have Ovechkin there. That's the question. What do we do with this top six? You know me, I like righties on the right even when I'm not playing the game itself. So you could argue... Then again, by, by the way, yeah, I know Jack Eichel is low franchise, and but I don't know why. It had to have been the contract with Patrick Laine. It had to have been. I think we're going to start Ovechkin there, and we just need to worry about the power play. We need to make sure that Tyson Jost and Claim Costine get their power play time. And hopefully, I can get this done quick enough, we can get into the sim, because this episode's gone on for quite a while as it is. So Tyson Jost, we'll look to get him here. And we need Claim Costine. we got to get them their power play time. So we'll go with Olia Levy down here. We'll go with Costing, so it'll be Doughty, Jost. How does that look? That looks okay. Left-handed shot. We could go with Clayton Keller. You know, yeah, we'll go with Clayton Keller. So Ovechkin, McDavid, Jost, Doughty, Keller, Eichel, Strom, Dow, Call, Costing, and Oli, you levy. This team is looking pretty damn good, if I do say so myself. Whether or not we can get over the cup, who knows, but we will start him with Keller and Strom down in the AHL. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be Sutter that gets scratched here. Of course, we need to get Davis into the lineup. And we'll actually put him right up on the top line and hope that he can rebound. And I don't think we need to really worry about anybody else. We don't necessarily need to get Dave McCabe into the lineup, and actually, who's the starting goalie right now? Michael DiPietro, good. We are good to go. We are good to continue. Will acquiring Ovechkin change the chemistry that this team had? That is the question, but like I said, he is a rental. We are absolutely going for the cup this year. Now, obviously, if we were trying to play this as realistic as possible, we wouldn't have gotten the prospects, but it is what it is. So let's keep going. We are only in February, so we need to move quickly. Michael DiPietro immediately gets hurt. That's awesome. Awesome. So let's see. A 5-3 victory there over the Ottawa Senators. So Ovi wins his first game in a Blues uniform. That, that'd be like Gretzky going to the Blues, right? That's my comparison. This is Gretzky to the Blues Part 2. Absolutely. Vevelinen will get the next start. I need to go down to the AHL again to get Lukanen into that main spot. Alex Ovechkin is on this team. Not too bad. 77 points on the year, 55 games in. So let's see here. Of course, we're going to have to immediately switch Carey Price back in between the pipes, but we get the 4-1 to win. The Chicago Wolves, of course, doing well. This could be a great year for both teams. Have the chance at that, of course, in the Bruins series as well. Make sure, if you're watching this video first, to go check out that video afterwards. It's a doozy, I'll tell you. But let's see here. Let's see. Can this team continue their winning ways? We'll sim up to the trade deadline. I obviously don't imagine us making too many other moves. Unless, knock on wood, somebody breaks a leg. I thought that was going to be an injury prompt. Oh, my God. 
Oh my god, my heart skipped a beat. That was... That was not cool, EA. I forgot it was, uh... I forgot the scouting was coming up, obviously, because uh, there was a little bit of time between recording the, the this episode and the last. But, so far, so good. Hopefully. Did I just jinx it against Ottawa? Did I? I didn't. We are still undefeated with Alex Ovechkin in the lineup. That is 40 wins on the season now. Not too bad at all. And we finally lost. I, I knew we would. You know, you, you're not allowed to open your mouth like that. The game knows. The game can hear you. 41, 14, and 7. Unreal success in both series that I have going on YouTube right now. It's just, it is crazy. Which, that, that's how these series are going to go. It's, it's, it's going to be either you struggle or you're competing for cups every year. There's, there's really... Is barely any middle ground of like, okay, yeah, like the, we're like the 2012 LA Kings where we kind of struggle, but who knows, maybe we pull off the miracle. Like, just it's so difficult to not just have your team turn into a super team that just wrecks everybody <laughs> just because of how the system is. As we lose to the Minnesota Wild, disappointed in the Valinen, but. Oh my god, things are looking good. <laughs> in a way, not necessarily boring, but in a way it's like right now would probably be a good time for one of those sim periods where it's like, okay, we're just waiting to see who we're playing in the playoffs because it is all but guaranteed. But in the meantime, I don't really have too much to talk about right now. <laughs> that is, That is the problem. Like, the only thing I could talk about, there are two things... There are two things on my mind right now that I haven't talked about. One is hockey-related, one is YouTube-related. And neither are that much fun to talk about. But you know what? Fuck it. They came to mind. What do I start with? I guess I'll go the YouTube one because it has uh, a little bit less traction. The whole PewDiePie thing, man. I don't know if anybody expected me to talk about this at all. I definitely wasn't going to make like its own separate video on it. No disrespect to anybody that did. And anybody that did make their own separate video on it wouldn't give a shit about my opinion anyway because of just the, like, they've, I'm so, I'm such a small blip on the radar, they literally would have no reason to care. But it's, it's insane, man. I don't know how many people have read into that. I, I don't know. It's, it's weird because I, you know, you'll, I'll watch videos with him, you know, not, being in character, so to speak. Respect the hell out of the guy. His content's not for me. But, yeah, it is a shame how badly he has been fucked over in the past few weeks. It is unbelievable. But I don't, I don't want to talk about it too much. I just said it was on my mind, and I wasn't going to ignore it from that point. But, yeah, it is an absolute shame what some people try to do with others. That's a very generalized statement. But even in the YouTube spectrum, just how much of a witch hunt it can be. It is crazy. The hockey thing, though, which you would probably guess, the Gustav Nyquist play. What a dick. <laughs> That's the only thing he can say. What a... I didn't... You really wouldn't expect him to be the one to do that. You would expect... Like, I mean, I don't even want to name anybody. Like, uh, put it this way, I would expect Brad Marchand to do that before I expected Gustav Nyquist to do that. And I'm not surprised he only got six games, but in a way it's like, man, you should be out for the rest of the goddamn year. Maybe that's a bit of a stretch, but only six games, or yeah, it's six games, wasn't it? Or was it seven? That was six games. How? How are you not out for at least 20 games? Unbelievable. Absolutely incredible. Jared Spurgeon, or uh, as Don Cherry likes to say, Jared Spurgeon. And I can't, every time I hear Spurgeon's name, I think of that now. It's awful. <laughs> but, yeah, man, just what a dick. And, I mean, Spurgeon's having a great year, so thankfully he wasn't that hurt. But, my God, could that have gone, oh, so much worse than it did. I mean, lucky he didn't lose an eye. It really could have been a as bad as him losing an eye. Dmitry Kolsov goes down to a concussion. Please don't let this be like the Bruins series where we're having a great year and then just before the playoffs you start throwing injuries in there. Please don't do that. 
Uh, let's call up Wesley, because we should be able to send him back down once the playoffs start. Unfortunately, our defenseman there is going to miss a little bit of time. The power play lines are going to get screwed up, because we are going to go with best lines. But whatever, Tyson Jost up to an 86. Not too bad at all. Costing still an 87. Of course, we will look at the player stats as we get... Toward the end of this, Yalevi and Lilia Grin, both up to 90 overall. We are going to put Lilia Grin though, back on the second pairing with Mikhail Sergachev. We'll go best lines down in Providence. Not Providence, Chicago. Jesus, I was waiting to make that mistake. I'm surprised it took this long. I really am. Uh, let's go with McGinn in instead of that Finnish guy, as I will call him. And we need to take out this Finnish guy for a defenseman. And we'll actually put in Furtak. So for the guy that hates Ben Blood, don't worry. He's not getting any more starting time. Let's wrap up this season. Just a handful of games to go. At this point, I'm wondering why the hell did I bring up the YouTube stuff? Why did I bring up... Gustav Nykus, but it killed a little bit of time, and that was the goal. While this team has not been as dumb, it's strange that this team hasn't been as dominant as the Bruins team happened to be in the other sim. Make uh, Shabbat's injured too. <laughs> He's out until the same day. Lovely. Thank you, EA. <laughs> Another injury. Cool. Uh, who's it going to be? Bjugstad, Bruce Phillips. Now, this is the one spot where we really had to worry because our defensive depth is not great. So he's better defensively. Riley Bruce is at least a really strong skater, as is Marcus Phillips. I'm going to go with Marcus Phillips. Yikes, this is a much worse situation than I expected us to be in. God damn. Here I am sitting here like, oh, I don't have too much to talk about. EA's like, oh, really? You get an injury. You get an injury. Everybody gets a freaking injury just to piss me off, basically, right? Thank you, EA. Sons of bitches. So that third pairing is looking a little bit weak. Marcus Phillips and Josh Wesley, the top line from the Chicago Wolves. Not too bad. But we will go best lines for the Wolves. And I won't I won't worry too much about the Finns being in there. Can we hit 56 wins? Will Vevelinen beat the Dallas Stars, who should be missing out on the playoffs? Ah, a concussion for Timothy Lilligren. He's out until May 10th. I should have bought some defensive depth at the deadline. I know this now. I was tempted to. I was tempted to. But did I expect three injuries? No, I did not. And I don't know how I could have been expected to uh, prepare for this many injuries. So say what you want. You can fault me. <laughs> you can absolutely fault me for that move right there. All the things I've done. Yolevi, Dowdy, some of the crazy trades we've pulled off and still keeping this team under the salary cap and constantly getting draft picks. Just knowing and understanding how to work this system to have success. I screwed up and I didn't get any defensive depth. And because of that, as we head into the first round, we have Josh Wesley, Marcus Phillips, and Jamie Bjugstad in our lineup. That is scary. Like, this could... This could go relatively poorly. And it also hurts the Chicago Wolves quite a bit. As they are making a push for the playoffs. Although I'm sure we will make it. We won the President's Trophy, which is nice. Before we find out who we're playing in the first round. Of course, let's take a look at the stats. We finished with 120 points. Not too bad at all. We'll look at the team stats first. I am sure we finished with the best offense and the best defense. And the Dallas Stars actually made a wild card spot. Not too bad. We, wow, we only won the President's Trophy by two points, and it's because we had more overtime losses than the Florida Panthers. Holy shit. 
we will have to take a look at the Florida Panthers. But goals for, beat the Panthers by quite a bit. Goals against, one more than the Blue Jackets. And then the Florida Panthers, 20 more let in than us. But the Blue Jackets, slightly better defensively. We did have the league's best power play, though. And we had an, an, a middle-of-the-road penalty kill. We will probably pay attention to that. But look at that, 37 and four on home ice. That is insane. We will definitely, though, take a look at the power play lines. And we'll manually, or the penalty kill lines. The power play is golden. But let's take a look here. Actually, before we look at the, before we look at our team, I want to look at the Florida Panthers. How are the Florida Panthers doing? Oh, that's right. They got Crosby. I forgot. I forgot. Crosby, Sam Reinhart, Bobby Ryan, Cam Atkinson, Jack Roslovich, Braden Point, Lawson Kraus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, never mind. I can I can see why they're doing well. Defensively, Luke Green, John Carlson, Tate Olson, Oscar Clefbaum. Goaltending, Charlie Liljegren. Or uh, not Liljegren, sorry, Lindgren. Sorry, I'm just saying Liljegren. My bad. And Jonathan Quick. An interesting combo there and while we're at it Columbus who did you have as a goalie oh my god of course <laughs> Alex Lyon the Blue Jackets goaltender in a tandem with Thatcher Demko <laughs> that is that is perfect if you were to have if you were to have like the the best team if you could take the best team out of all the series I've had Vancouver Quebec even the Islanders series. I think if people voted, like, who are the best players we've ever had, even, like, Linus Soderstrom, I think it was, back in the Boston series, we had a goalie. I think his name was Linus, like, the first Boston series. It might be Lyon and Demko as the two best goalies we've ever had. Damn, that is, that is surprising. Well, let's take a look quickly, though. I do want to wrap up this video before it goes on. For too long. Carey Price, 71 games. Played him a lot more than I expected to. 49, 15, and 5 record with a 924 save percentage. Vevelinen, pretty damn impressive as well in his few appearances. But obviously, Carey Price was the man. Defensively, Drew Doughty with 72 points. He was a plus 48. Sergachev, 39 points. Yolevi, 29 points. Thomas Shabbat missed the last game of the season. He finished with 22 points. Liljegren, 12 points. But you look at that. 78 games was the fewest amount from one of our starting defensemen. Josh Wesley, a plus three in four games. So that is somewhat promising. Connor McDavid, 79 points, a plus 32. Ovechkin played an extra two games. He finished with 74 points. Same as Jack Eichel. We had five players over the 70-point total, including Klim Kostin, who was on the third pairing with Tyson Jost. Jost finished with 53.67 for Keller. Dylan Strom, 42 points. Now you can argue, do we keep the offense together or maybe do we bump Dylan Strom down to that third line? And who knows, maybe, because we still have that decision to make on who we want our top six to be in the upcoming offseason, maybe Dylan Strom, we sign and trade him. Who knows, he might have just... He might have just screwed himself out of a big-time contract with us. Timo Meyer on the third line, not too bad. Army on the fourth line with 30 points, 22 for Zaka. And Poirier with 20 points on the fourth line, not too bad at all. So, yeah, we have an interesting decision to make. And, of course, the crisis defensively. Kenny Malkin, 90 points. Jesus. And it, make make no mistake, it is a crisis right now with what we are dealing with. I did want to check out the Calder race, which isn't much of a race. Krastanovic with 40 points. You do have some familiar names, of course. Sorelli, even Graham Knott, who we've had in prior series. Uh, Seneshin, Yanni Kwokinen, Vitaly Abramov, of course, among other familiar names. But nobody really ran away with it. Unless there's a rookie goalie. But I don't know if there will be. It might go to a goalie. Mason McDonald. Uh, Capo Kakonen. 
Kakonen, who we've seen a couple times. Anyway, I'm looking at too many stats. I was just intrigued, though, and I know some other people will be as well. A moment of truth time. Who will we play in the first round is the question. Place your bets. Will it be somebody? Will it be the Dallas Stars? Or will it be the wild card from the Pacific Division? Let's find out. And it is the Dallas Stars. I'm nervous. <laughs> I know we have a much better team. But after the way this series began within the first few seasons, I don't like the idea of playing the Dallas Stars in the playoffs at all. Man. But that, that series happens in the next episode where we begin our push for another Stanley Cup. Let me know what we should do lineup-wise. Do we drop Dylan Strom down in favor of Costing or Tyson Jost? And defensively, I'm sorry. I have failed you for not getting the proper defensive depth. But hopefully the goaltending and the offense can carry us through. That is it for this one, guys. Of course, I hope you did enjoy this episode. And if you did, of course, you know what to do. Make sure to hit that like button to help support me and my channel. Subscribe if you haven't already to continue following this series and others. And of course, spread the word. That doesn't help either. I will catch you guys in the next one. Episode 32, the playoff push begins again. Well, not necessarily the playoff push. The playoffs begin. That, that's... I fucked up another out. I fucked up another outro. Oh well. Goodbye.